So what are some of the differences between making 25K a month and making 100K a month? What's going on everyone, Juan Valdez here and today in this video, I wanted to go over some of the differences between making 25K a month and scaling up to 100K a month in Shopify dropshipping. Some of you guys may be thinking like, why did I choose these specific numbers? And the reason why is because I actually got a message from a student inside the P2P dropshipping accelerator and he messaged me on Instagram and this is what he said. I'm gonna show you guys. This is what he wrote to me right here and I'll read it off to you guys. So he said, yo, what's going on? I didn't want to post this on the P2P mastermind. I just wanted to send it to you directly. This is what me and my partner did last month and we really want to scale up to $100,000 months. What was the major difference in making this kind of money versus making $100,000 a month or more? Talk to you later, bro. And then this was a screenshot that he sent me. So it looks like he was right around 25K. He probably ended off the day with 25K. That's why I figured I'd make this video specifically to help them out, but also to help some of you guys out. So obviously shout out to the guy Merck for taking action on the strategies that we share inside of the P2P dropshipping accelerator. But I want to make sure I'm able to provide all of you guys, especially some of you guys that have been following me for a while with value as well. Now, I know I could have made a video on going from simply zero to like a thousand dollars in sales or like from zero to five thousand dollars in sales. If you guys would want to see a video like that, make sure you just let me know in the comments down below. For now, I'll make this video for, you know, specifically for them and anyone that's around that area, right? If you're already generating a good amount of sales a month, this video will apply to you. I would say this is definitely a lot more of an advanced video. You know, you can still learn a thing or two from it though. So, We'll kind of just get right into it. I got some things I wanted to kind of go over now. I'll start with some of the things that I believe you want to stick to, some of the basics, and then I get into the more advanced things later in the video. So make sure you guys stay till the end. To kind of get started, right? One of the things I want to make sure you guys keep in mind is like when you're already generating results, and let's say you already cranked out, let's say 10K a month, or in their case, 24K a month, the things that they did that month isn't what generated them the 25K a month. The things that they did previous to those months is what actually generated them the 25k a month mark right making their story taking the time to build it correctly doing product research making sure you're doing the product research correctly building the right kind of facebook ads doing email marketing customer service all these different things are what actually led them and anyone else getting any kind of results right because it's not just like you do one thing right and like overnight you're like generating all kinds of numbers or crazy results right that's not how it works usually the things that you do it's not like a compound effect right so you take the time to build your story first then from there you transition onto product research then from there you transition into marketing and setting up your marketing campaigns then you do email marketing and set up back-end system you do customer service you respond to the engagement in your ads and you post on social media you reach out to instagram influencers so you do all these different things and then from there things start to kind of come together and you start to generate results you may not generate like 20k a month or 24k a month right away but you'll start to generate results and then from there once you start generating results then you then obviously start to gradually scale either scaling your ads or if you're obviously using utilizing a lot more influencers but one of the things you guys want to keep in mind is that you always want to stick to the basics right so whatever got you from zero to making 20k a month now when you want to scale up to the next level because obviously this is a lot more advanced of a talk you want to make sure you're doing those things just at a much larger scale because those are the things that got you to the 25k a month mark in general and so when it comes to scaling up it's going to require a lot of the same things right it's going to require good customer service it's going to require posting on social media often if you already doing that if you weren't doing that you should start doing that it's going to require reaching out to a lot more instagram influencers it's going to require a lot more email marketing retargeting scaling on your ad campaigns and a whole lot more you want to make sure that you're always doing the things that got you the results in the first place right because a mistake that a lot of people do is that they think that now that they got the results they have to do like this crazy different thing to scale or get more results right but in reality you want to keep doing the things that got you those results and scale those things and take those things to the next level right i want to make sure that I drive it home with you guys because this is important. People will start to get confused and think that one or two different things that they did like this month that they changed is what got them those results right away. And in reality, it's not. So you want to make sure you guys keep it in mind is like the work that you're putting in from when you first got started to that point, all those things combined is what got you those results. So you want to make sure you're doing all those things. So that's one of the first things I wanted to cover. You want to make sure you're still doing the basics. So like for me in my e-commerce business, you know, obviously now that we've scaled up, you know, we're hovering around like the 60 to 80k a month mark every single month and the way we went from zero to you know hovering around that area is by again scaling the things that we were doing right so we know that we had to take care of customer service now for those of you guys that aren't really big on customer service that's like huge right and 
that's like actually super important because once you scale up to really scale from like $25,000 to like $100,000, it's gonna require a lot more customer service. You better best believe that because obviously now you're advertising to more people, you're driving more traffic and obviously you're working with more customers. And so one of the, just a quick example, one of the ways that I scaled, the amount of customer service that I was providing in my business is when I was hovering around the 20K a month mark, I had just two virtual assistants helping me out with customer service and they were doing like customer emails and they were also monitoring that comment and engaging on the ads that I was running. And they helped me out and they weren't working. I wasn't getting all parts of the day covered. I would say they were working from the Philippines. So in the Philippines, they're on a different time zone. So I think in the Philippines, like right now, it's like, it's nighttime over here, not nighttime, but it's like 8 p.m. here in Los Angeles. Over there, I think it's like early in the morning, right? So they're gonna be covering my customer service while I go to sleep. But during the day, I didn't really have anybody covering my customer service, right? What I did when I started to scale up and do more volume, one of the things I did is bring on somebody else, another staff member to help out with customer service uh, so I can have a lot more coverage. And I actually ended up bringing on someone else after that because I realized that as I started to scale up, I had a lot more engagement to kind of cover on my ads. I wanted to make sure I'm involved with all the people that are commenting on the ads. And I had a lot more customer emails, a lot of questions coming in and a whole lot more. So one of the ways that I scaled was really simple. I hired two more virtual assistants and now they can answer support and I can have a full time 24 hour support system, which is huge because if when I didn't have that and I started to scale, I realized that I would get all these messages and questions from customers from earlier in the day and because I couldn't respond soon enough, I, you know, I, I know that I was losing out on sales because usually what happens is somebody comes into your store and they have a quick question right before they buy, but because they can't get a quick enough response, they don't buy, you know, they just change their mind. And so that was huge. That was just a quick example of like how I scaled the customer service I was already doing into just doing more of it, right? And that's how, that really helped me a ton because when it comes to really scaling up, customer service is huge. Now, that was just one example of the basics. You wanna do all the things that you guys are doing that got you to that mark or whatever mark you're at right now for those of you guys that are already getting results and just do it a lot more and a lot better. So that's that. Now, this more advanced strategy that really helped me scale overall was really building systems in every single part of my e-commerce business, right? Or not in every single part, in every area of my e-commerce business. So I personally like to look at my e-commerce business as like a whole, right? I don't look at it as just like, I find a hot product and I run an ad and that's it. I like to look at it as a whole. So I have my store optimization, which is like one part, one area of my e-commerce business. I have my product research and the process behind it. That's another area of my e-commerce business. I have uh, marketing, which is another area of e-commerce business and backend system, another area in like customer service and outsourcing and things like that. That's a whole nother area. So for me, building systems in every single part or in every area of my e-commerce business is what really helped me scale up. And building systems, the reason why it helps is because it allows you to be a lot more efficient. Uh, that's for sure. If you can have a system in place for, let's say, um, product research, right? Well, now, rather than going and testing random products without knowing if they have any chance of doing well or not, you could just run it through your product research process and put it through there and see if like it's a product that's even worth testing, right? Like you might find that it has a good amount of orders on AliExpress, but you might find out that there aren't as many stores actually advertising this product, or if they are, uh, maybe they're not advertising it on Facebook, maybe they're using other sources of traffic. And so that's good to know because then you know like maybe you shouldn't advertise, that's not a good Facebook product, right? It's a good product for maybe like YouTube, Google, or another advertising platform. And so the reason, that's the reason why it's good to have product research processes in place or just systems in place in every single area of your e-commerce business when you're really trying to scale because it makes everything a lot more efficient. Same thing with ads, right? So whenever we wanna, oh, we have a system in place for ads, whenever we're gonna test any new ads, well, we find out, we have a system in place where we find the ad, the best ads for whatever product or um, niches we're planning on getting into. And, or I would say, that we find the best ads for the products related to whatever products we're going after and whatever niches we're going after as well. And we kind of save those ads and what we do is we analyze those ads to see why they did well. And then after we realize what made those ads do well, well, that helps us set up and know how we're gonna have our ads running, right? What kind of ad copy? Are we gonna use images? Did videos do better? And a whole lot more. And so having a system in place for um, all these different areas in your e-commerce business will help you scale and it'll make everything a lot more efficient. And so 
Um, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to kind of cover in this video to kind of drive it home. Make sure you guys are sticking to the basics because the basics is what got you to that level. Uh, whether you're making $10,000 a month, whatever kind of results you're getting now, stick to the basics, just do the basics at a larger scale and make sure you're focusing on building systems, right? For store optimization, uh, for our store optimization, we make sure that every single time we find a product that we're gonna test, automatically make sure we go through and make sure our store is up to date and our product pages are up to date for those products, right? That's that's like guaranteeing that process. And so uh, that's just a quick example of how we have a process for you know store optimization, product research. Make sure you're researching your products across more than one, just one resource. You're not just using AliExpress. You know, you're looking for ads and seeing how those ads are doing for those products and a whole lot more. Same thing, actually, when I'm going over what kind of ads to market and, you know, how to really set up your advertising campaigns. Well, you should research, at least well, that's what we do. We research and find some of the best ads, again, for related products and products in whatever niche we're planning on testing in. And so we have an idea of what kind of ads to set up ourselves. And for back end systems, well, we like to do is go in and study other people's back end systems and see what kind of things they're doing with email marketing, upsells and downsells, retargeting, all that great stuff. And so you want to make sure you have systems in place for that. Also, customer service, make sure you have a full operating system for that. We like to have we like to have 24 hour customer service and where we make it super easy for anyone to um, any customer that comes in that potentially wants to buy something and has a question, well, we want to make do our best to answer that question right away. And so we have customer service at all times of the day. So um, that's pretty much it for everything as far as like scaling. I hope you guys picked up a thing or two from this video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like, if you dropped the like on this video. And of course, if you have any questions about anything I went over, drop it in the comments below. And if you guys want to learn a lot more about e-commerce overall, uh, either if you're just getting started or if you really want to scale up, um, check out the P2P dropshipping accelerator, right? There's going to be a link down below. You can check out some of our student results and talk to our, some of our students to see how uh, they've had their experiences be with the program. And so uh, shameless plug, I just want to make sure I'm obviously sharing as many resources as I can with you guys. So, and of course, I can't forget, if you haven't already, make sure you join the VFAM, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.